Hello guys, welcome back to the Honda Show. The channel has crossed 50 subscribers and that's a very important milestone for me personally. So first things first, thanks for subscribing to my channel. In this video today, I'm gonna to talk about how you can just invest in two funds and be done with your investing needs. It's that simple. So this investing strategy is very important and I think it's very apt for most people because it's a simple strategy, you get very good returns out of it and you don't have to rack your brains. You don't have to constantly read all the reports on how to pick stocks and whether you're doing the right thing or wrong thing and be worried about your stock picking. This helps you in focusing on your family, focusing on your job, so you can make money, enjoy life and not just be obsessed about money all the time. This strategy helps you to be on the winning side because 95% of the professional stock market investors do not beat the index and 99.9% .9 of the individual stock market investors don't beat the index. What I mean by index here is all of US stock market, not a particular sector of the market. So I'm talking about the whole US economy. Jack Bogle, who's the patron saint of the investing community, popularized passive index investing, and I'm a priest who prays at his altar. So if you are among the people who are obsessed with being among the top 1% or 2% of the investors, index investing is not for you. But if you are an investor who has a laid back personality like I do, and you are happy being in the top five, 10% of, of all the investors, this is the strategy you need to look at. So you can do index investing by doing ETFs or mutual funds. Now, I recently started a solo 401k this year and it does not let me buy ETFs in, the, in that uh, account. So I'm buying mutual funds. So you can have issues like that, but generally speaking, most accounts will let you buy either ETFs or mutual funds. ETFs are more popular with people because they trade in real time and you can use very small sums of money to invest in ETFs. So a lot of people tend to like that. And in last 10, 15 years, 20 years, ETFs have boomed. Buying an index fund is a very good strategy because it lets you have an exposure to all sectors of the US economy without having to pick and choose constantly which sectors to buy, which stocks to buy, and having to sell them and buying them. So these are a lot of decisions and which no human being can do them right all the time. Plus, index funds have very low expense ratios. You can go with almost all of the top brokerage houses and get extremely low expense ratios. Most of them let you buy and sell these ETFs or mutual funds for free. So I personally buy funds through Vanguard. Vanguard is a mutual company, so it's not really trying to make money off of you. It's only taking money as expenses from you to run its day-to-day -day operations. And it is considered the gold standard in the industry. So the purpose of investing for most people should be to protect their purchasing power. So the rate of return that should be acceptable to you should be inflation plus a few percentage points on top of that. There are some people who are trying to find one stock or one industry where they can hit it out of the park, make a lot of money. Usually those people have mindsets similar to those people who play lottery and you should try to stay away from both, both of them, uh, from lottery players and from people who are trying to pick stocks and think that they'll buy this one stock and that's it, they don't have to do nothing all their lives. I mean, that's not a good attitude to have generally in your life. But if you're still very passionate about investing and index investing doesn't do it for you, I would still say do not have more than 10% of your money under active management. What I mean by active management is buying individual stocks or going with sector ETFs. About 70 to 80% of the money that you own should always be at any point in time be invested with index funds. The single biggest contributing factor to investing success is emotional stability and not intelligence. People tend to overrate intelligence and when you are comforted in the fact that you have exposure to all of US economy and a lot of the international economy because most of these top US companies, about 50% or sometimes even more of their revenue comes from other countries. So you have international exposure too. You don't even have to buy funds that give you international exposure because index funds is enough. So the only two funds that you need to buy is one index fund and one fund that gives you exposure to short-term treasuries. By short-term treasuries, I mean US government treasuries, which are one to three year long. So average duration of about two years, that's about it. Because the financial services industry has boomed so much, there is a plethora of mutual funds and ETFs out there. And trying to select an ETF and a mutual fund that's right for you is as hard as selecting a stock. So just go with a good brokerage house, buy one index fund, and which is about which should be about 80% of your portfolio and about 20% of short-term treasuries. That's it. So in this video, my recommendation to you would be to buy Vanguard index funds and Vanguard short-term treasury funds. Vanguard is not sponsoring this video because their name is gold and they don't have to sponsor YouTubers like me. And I like to put my money with companies as such 
who don't have to do a lot of advertising because they are so good. So the only other fund that you need to buy apart from the index fund is VGSH. This is a fund that gives you exposure to short-term US treasuries, treasuries that have a lifespan of about one to three years. So average lifespan of about two years. I think the current yield on VGSH is 1.68%. It should come up on your screen. So as you can see on the picture, there is negligible volatility in VGSH. Only about 5% if you look in the last 10 years. So that gives you ample liquidity, money when you want it. In bad times, you can just sell the treasuries and get your money. And in the good times, you're getting the yield. So you don't have to hunt for online high yield bank accounts. So this is a nice secure way to get a little yield, keep your money safe, keep your powder dry. When an opportunity comes in real estate or if the market drops, you buy more index funds. So let me show you a small clip of Warren Buffett. If you have to listen to it a few times, let it soak it in you, let it marinate your bones, because this will convince you what the Oracle himself thinks of index funds and why it is the best thing for you. The trick is not to pick the right company, it's to be, because sh- most people aren't equipped to do that, and plenty of times I make mistakes on that. The trick is to essentially buy all the big companies through the S&P 500, and to do it consistently, and to do it in a very, very low cost way, because costs really matter in investments. Uh, if, if returns are going to be 7 or 8 percent and you are paying 1 percent for fees, that, that makes an enormous difference in how much money you have on retirement. To conclude the video, I'm going to say some cliched things, and they're cliched because they're right, and they're right for all times. So Charlie Munger says, whatever is trite is right, and I'm an old soul myself, so I tend to believe in him. Number one. Start buying investments as soon as possible. Buy everything and your holding period should be forever or as long as you can. Number two, you can hold it tight only if you are confident that you've bought it right. Number three, don't time the markets. Continue to invest at all times. Number four, you don't have to buy international stocks because the big US companies have a lot of exposure to international markets and some of them derive actually majority of their revenue from countries outside the US. So you are very safe in that regard. Number five, the only thing all market players, academicians, practitioners, small market players, all of them agree is the only thing you can control is expenses. So it is very important for you to buy a fund with the lowest expense. In my forthcoming videos, you will learn more about business, finance, real estate. See you in those videos. Happy investing. See you later.